Welcome to Live Doc, your online Doc Yomi Shear. Shalom, welcome back to Psachem Daf Mem. We are uh, at the last line of Lama Tesman Beis. Last few words, Omar of Yosef. A person should not scold. We learned earlier that a person pours hot water on grain, it prevents it. The extreme heat actually prevents the chametz process from initiating. Therefore, says of Yosef, when he engages in this type of activity, chalita, scolding, just make sure. A person should not, should refrain from being chaylet, two kernels of wheat next to each other. Why? Perhaps one of the kernels will go ahead, will embed itself, will position itself, and the crack of the other one. So it's going to position itself inside the crack of the other one. And as a result, the rush of water, the boil, the boiling water will not reach on all four sides of the grain because they're blocking each other at that point. And can come to chimitz. So we have grain which are now moist, but there is no rush, there's no boil all around it, and it's that boiling effect that prevents the chimitz. Therefore he says, refrain from doing two kernels together. A person should not scorch with fire. Two stalks of wheat. One with the other. Why? The concern is, Perhaps some moisture will come out of one as a, as a, as a result of the, of the heat, of the fire. It's going to force some moisture out of one stalk. And the other one will absorb that moisture. And this can result in becoming chametz. Va'asil de chametz can come to chametz. Amale rava, yachi. If you have that concern, then why only when there are two stalks? Afiluchad anami. Even with one single stalk of of wheat, you still have the same concern. There are many kernels on that stalk. Dil manafik mehayresha. Perhaps some moisture will emerge from one head of the stalk, from some kernels on that side. Ubali lechresha. And the other side will absorb it. Ella Marava, there's no concern. May Paris Ninu, we're speaking about moisture coming out of produce, out of Paris. Or may Paris in a This type of moisture does not make chametz. Vahadar be Abaye, mehahi. And actually, Abaye did revert. He backtracked from what he said earlier that we're not meant to. Be chayrech scorched two stalks next to each other. But not because he holds like Rava that may Paris don't pose a concern. Rather, because he held the kol agav midlayu, because any moisture which is on the move in transit, such as over here where the moisture is dripping out and running down, doesn't create chibbutz because it's not stationary, it doesn't get absorbed, it's just flowing and dripping right by. Therefore, there's no concern with scorching those two stalks. He holds may Paris, can be machmitz, but not when it's flowing in transit and not being absorbed. As we find that Abayi said, "Chai chatzva de avishna." You have this chatzva, this container, in which you would roast grain. Schifa shari. If it's overturned, then it's okay because the moisture exuding from the grain, due to the heat, will just roll away, drip away, and will not be absorbed back into the stalks. Zikifa aser. However, if the kli is upright, then it's aser because the moisture which is going to be extracted from the grain as a result of the heat, remains in place and will become reabsorbed in the grain, which will make it us. So we see that something which is on the move, in transit, poses no concern. Rav Amar, Afilus Kifanami Shari. Even if the Kli is upright, there's no concern. May Paris, you know, we're speaking about juice coming from produce, from wheat, from barley. U may Paris, in and this type of juice does not make chum. So regarding me, Paris, Rabbi says there's no concern. Abai says there is. All agree. If the moisture is merely running by, in transit, will not be absorbed, and does not pose a chametz concern. Tan Rabbanon. Ein loisin to s'erim pesach So prior to grinding their grain, they would soak it, lightly soak it, which was called lisisa. 
And the point was to loosen up the grain and make it more suitable for grinding. It would separate, it would allow easy separation of the of the various skins and the grains, the, the chaff, the bran, the, the, the wheat germ. So they would take this soaked grain and they would actually grind it up, they would actually uh, chop it up somewhat because it smash it and then they would take it after they separated the various skins, they would take the the uh, pure grain, free of all these uh, impurities, and bring it to the grinder, to the mill, and uh, this would result in high quality, refined flour. So this was the Lysisa process. They would take the wheat or the barley, and first soak it in water, loosen it up, and then they would go ahead and crush it a bit to remove the skins, and then take it to the mill. Can you do that on Pesach? In Lysisin, Sa'irim of Pesach. You can't do Lysisa, you can't soak the grains, the Sa'irim grain, the barley, on Pesach. Vim Lassas. If he did soak them, Nizbaku Asuris. If he sees that they've become bloated and they're split, that indicates that it's on its way. The Chomet process has begun, and Asuris, he can no longer eat them, because they're about to become Chomets. Loin Nizbaku, however, if they haven't yet split, but Taurus, then there's no concern. Rabbi Yesi Aymer, Shoyer Bechametz, he has a chilish. Even if he sees the barley is bloated and has begun to split, just quickly take it and soak it in vinegar. The acidic effect of the vinegar will stunt the chimetz process. The chimetz tsoimson. And this vinegar will actually harden the iron and prevent the chimetz process from taking place. Amar Shmuel ain't halachah Rabbi Yaisi. Halachah doesn't follow Rabbi Yaisi. We can't rely on this concept. Chaimetz vinegar doesn't have the ability to stop the chametz process. Amar Rav Chizda Amar Marukva. Loinis baku mamish. We said that the grains which were soaked and are now bloated and split that poses a concern. Says Marukva. Even prior to splitting, if it's on its way to splitting, if it's susceptible to being split, that's also an indication that it's on its way to becoming chametz. Ela kol she'ilu manich na'pi chavis. The formula is like this. If you take this soft, soaked grain and put it on a, if you would take it and put it on a chavis, a barrel of wine, and due to the, the uh, smell, the sharp scent of that wine, it would go ahead and split those grain. Vein is baka is melein, they'll become split. That also is already too far gone and you can't eat the sa'ir any longer. The grain has to actually split in order to exhibit signs that it's on its way to chimetz. But if it's not yet at that point, even if you put it on a barrel and then it would split, that's not considered to be a concern. In fact, Shmuel did halachal ha'maisa. Bedura in this town, the Bebar Choshu, that belonged to this fellow Bar Choshu, and there was some grain which was soaked, but not yet come to the point of being split. But, it was very soft enough that it was susceptible to being split had it been placed on top of the barrel. He was matter. This Baku Mamash, because he maintains that only if you actually see, if it exhibits signs of Bikua, it's already been split, then we have a concern. Up until that point, it's okay. Let's take a look at perhaps at Rashi here. So if we just back up from where we're holding right now, back up around six lines in Rashi. Rashi begins with the word Nizbaku. Have it? Nizbaku? Machmas anipuch. So if the kernels have split on account of them being bloated, Shemachmas amayim, due to the water absorbed within. Asuris. Why the Asur? The Vadim and Maris Lachavit. It's certainly on the way. They're about to become Chametz. Rabbi Yisri says, Shor Bechametz. Soak it in vinegar. Emroya Isan Shanoifchais. If he sees them bloating, Shoyron Mechaimetz just soaked him in vinegar, Mechaimetz Soimson, Shnaim Balaz, Ve'ena Manichel Lahachmetz, the vinegar will prevent the Chimot's process. Now, Marukva says that even if it hadn't yet split, there's still a concern if it wouldn't withstand the sharp smell of wine. Ve'ena Sbakis Malayin, She'ena Nechoyles Lamoit, it can't withstand the Pnebrecha Yain, the scent of the wine. Shmuel disagrees, in fact, he did Halacha Lamaisa. Bedura de Beber Hoshe, Bekfar in this town, Shlaisa Ish, Nis Baku Mamish. Kalayman, the Inasur is El Nis Baku Mamish. Only time it's Asur, if there's an actual split in the grain. 
And those corners were not yet split, and therefore he was matir. So at this point, we learned about soaking barley. The Bryce says, we're not meant to do so. If he did it, and it got bloated to the point that it split, it's asr. If it's almost split, Marukva says it's still asr, Shmo says it's mutar. Arisa says, there's a solution. Take the split kernels, toss it into vinegar, which will stunt the chimus process. Amar Rabba, Baal nefesh, if a person is concerned about his nefesh, wants to be machmer, lo yiltais, he should not soak his grain. My iri Baal nefesh, why is this specific to a person who is machmer? I feel kuli nami, even an ordinary person. Nami should not go ahead and soak his grain. Does Sanya, we learned in a price, ain loises in sorry in a pesach. Hachikamar, this is what Rabbi meant to say. Yeah, the Bryce is speaking about barley, which are more susceptible to chimutz. Bal nefesh, however, a person who's going to be machmer, afilu chit in the shriri, even when it comes to wheat, which are more tough and harder than barley, lo yotis, he shouldn't soak them. So al pi halacha, sorry, cannot be soaked. When it comes to chitin, standard halacha allows, but a bal nefesh should be machmer. Omalir of Nachman, so Nachman exclaimed, he says, No, man, Sayis, Leila Abu. Whoever listens, man, the Sayis, Leila Abu, whoever listens to Rabba, he called him Abba, as she says, Lashon Rabbonus. Whoever's going to listen to this instruction, that you don't uh, soak your uh, wheat, you know what's going to happen? Oh, Nama, he push it. He's going to eat unclean bread, full of uh, all those impurities. There's no concern with soaking wheat. I'll bring you a riot. In the home of Rav Huna, they would soak their wheat. Everybody soaked their wheat. He disagreed with Rabbi's Chum. There's no reason to be machm. The Rav Amar also lotus. He holds, not only is a Baal Nefesh meant to be machmer, but an ordinary person is not even allowed to, is an answer to soak the grains. And he's speaking even about chitim. Says, well, how does that work? But all the sanya, but haven't we learned in the Bryce? Ain loises in certain repesach. We may not soak barley. Sorn the loy. Barley you can't. Ho chiti shari, apparently chiti is okay. So why does Rav say it's us? Loy me boy yikama. The Bryce was referring to chitin as well, but needless to say, loy me boy yachitin. Needless to speak about chitin, given the ispeit siraya, since the chita, uh, the wheat kernel, has uh, this um, this crack, has these cracks, as we discussed earlier with those um, two kernels, uh, two kernels. So a wheat kernel has a crack, has cracks in it. Ailubumayo. So due to the cracks that are present in the surface of the chita, so yeah, water can penetrate. And certainly you may not soak them because they're going to absorb that water and become chametz. So of course chitim are not meant to be soaked. Avol sari deshi, the chidushes. Even barley, even barley which are more smooth, have a smoother surface than chitim. Don't have those cracks. Ema shaper dummy, perhaps. It's okay to soak them. Kamash malon. The Bryson tells us, no, you can't. So according to this, serum is a great chidush. They have a smoother surface. Perhaps it's okay to get soaked. Bryce says it can't, but certainly chitim, which have those cracks, which allow water to penetrate, you're not meant to soak them. And it's an issue to soak. Hodama Rava, Rava backtracked. He said, It's okay, you're allowed to soak your chitim. Avarai, the sanya. Yoitzim will pass in the key of Adro. Bryce says, if a person eats matzah on Pesach, he's be, he could be yoitzi. Whether we're speaking about matzah, which is clean, high quality, purified uh, uh, flour, Without those uh, impurities of the skins, etc., vehadra, and it can be yitzim matzah if it's um, whole grain as well. That's the price. The efsha nekia b'leilasisa, you can't have pure flour, high quality, high grade flour without first soaking it. If the price allows you to eat matzah, which is clean from all these impurities. Apparently, lisi says okay. Says the Gemara. A svir of Papa Rava. So Rav Papa asked Rava Kash. He proving that apparently this uh, matzah, which is made from pure 
wheat flour indicates that it was first soaked. You can't have pure flour without soaking. There's a bride which is like this. Ha kmochen vaslosis. So kmochen is ordinary flour, whole grain flour. Vaslosis are the pure flours. Without these impurities. So the kmochen and the slosis shall nachrum from goyim. Shall kfarim term. If they're from the village, they're tar because Rashi says they're not particular about having their flour cleaned up and their grains soaked. So we assume no water has come into contact with uh, their grain and it was not hukshil kabo tumma. Only something which is wet can become tummy. So these are considered to be tar. They shall krach and tumma. However, the ones coming from the towns, from the cities, they're tummy because there they're more particular. They soak, they separate the, the chaff, the bran. And since it came into contact with water, it can be a kabo tumma and it's presumed to be tar. The kfar my time. Why the ones coming from the village considered to be tar? Lav mishum the lasasi. Apparently because they don't soak. And the Bryce clearly refers to it as soilus. So apparently soilus, which is high quality pure flour, does not need soaking. So apparently there's no connection, there's no relation necessarily between pure flour and the soaking process. So therefore he's refuting the raya of Rav. Rav says, I am proving to you that you can do the sisa because the Bryce says you can be yaitse with high quality flour Used for the matzah, you can't have quality flour without lusisa. You have a brisa, a brisa which discusses soilless, pure flour, without soaking. That's why it's tar. Tirgumu akimcha says the Gemara, when the brisa discusses unwet, unsoaked, and tar flour, the ones from the kfar, it's not in reference to the slosis, the purified flour. We're speaking about the kmachen. So kmachen are a whole grain, and they're presumed to be free of because they never come into contact with water, because you can make whole grain without soaking. So when the Bryce says that the kfarim is tar, that's in reference to the kmachim. When the Bryce speaks about the, the supply coming from the cities, which are tome, that's a reference to the slosses which were soaked. Okay, so this was the back and forth between Rava and Rav Papa. Ba said enough, after Rava left the Bismedish, Omar, Rav Papa berated himself. He says, Oh, my time, Eloi, Emel, Emeha. Why didn't I bring him a raya from the following halacha? I could have proved him clearly that you can have high quality flour without soaking. The Omar, Rav Zeyr, Omar, Bimur, Omar, Shmo, Chit, and Shom, Manachis. The wheat used for the Manachis, Ein, Loises, and Oisa. They wouldn't even soak them for concern about Chimut, the Menachas, not meant to be Chimut. So they wouldn't soak it. The Kakar, Lo, Soilus. Nevertheless, we find in the Torah many times over, Referencing a mincha flour with the word soilus. Apparently, you can make soilus without soaking. So, this would have been a good rye against Rava. Okay. Continues the Gemara. Hodama Rava. So now Rava took it a step further. Initially, he said it was Asr to be loises the Yechitin. Then he said it was Mutter. And now he took it a step further. Not only is it Mutter, but it's actually a mitzvah. Mitzvah Lusas. It's a mitzvah to go ahead and soak the grain, the chitim, which you're going to use for your matzah. Shinemar, shmarat matzah matzah. You're meant to safeguard the matzahs from chimots. Now, iloi deboi lesisa, if the kernels of wheat don't need to be soaked, shimmer lomai. What's the point of watching? You're watching it from becoming chimots. You're securing it, you're safeguarding it from chimots. It's not going to be soaked. Then, what are you watching it from? Is Shimur Delisha? Is it a reference to Shimur from the time of kneading after the water was actually introduced? If that's what the Pasuk was referring to, Shimur Delisha Lav Shimuru. Apparently, Shimur from that point onward is not sufficient. You need to have Shimur before that. Evidently, there was water going to be introduced here. Apparently, you have to soak the wheat. How do we know that the shimur from the point in time of Lisha is not sufficient to fulfill the mitzvah of Bishmartem and Samatsis? Domar of Huna, Vitzekel Shel Nachem, these doughs of, of Goyim, which didn't exhibit signs of Chimut, so you know that it's not Chimutz. Adam Malik Reisimhen, one can fill himself with it, we're speaking about Pesach at night, provided that he eats a Kazais of 
true matzah, valid matzah, matzah which was produced by Yisrael, Bachroina, that should be his last portion. Let's take a look at Rashi. Rashi here is at the first wide line, Damar Fun Agarsina, but Seiko Shal Nachr. Shemarker Ben Shleich Mitzu. He sees uh, this dough from the guy, he knows that it's not Chamitz. It doesn't have these signs of Chimutz. Shein Shom Loich Karne Chagavim, Loich Siva Ponov, doesn't have these cracks, it's not pale. To have a Simon Siddiq with Simon Sirkel Kamon. The world will give us these signs. So he sees it's not Chamitz. He can eat it because it's not Chamitz, but it's not Matzah. You need to have something positive. It's not enough that it's not Chametz. It needs to have that positive element in order for it to be suitable for the Matzah of Mitzvah. So you can eat it, but Sheyechal Kazayis Matzah Bachreina. He needs to eat a Kazayis of proper Matzah, which was Shomer, Matzah Shmur. That should be his last portion. The Bahal Matzah. Because he wasn't Yaitzi Matzah using the produce of the Goy. Because it didn't have shimor for the sake of matzah. Even though we see, we see clearly there's no chimutz here. Says Rashi, in order for it to be kosher for matzah's mitzvah, it needs to be shomer, watched lishma, for the sake of the matzah's mitzvah. Like they say in the bakery, the shei matzah's mitzvah. So you can have something which is not chimutz, but not matzah. Not matzah's mitzvah, at least. So he needs to eat a proper matzah b'achroina. Why dafka at the end? Says Rashi, he mitzvah sachilosa shema pesach, he chayv sachilosa. The proper way of eating the matzah, the mitzvah, is at the end of your meal, which is really meant to be together with the karm pesach, which is meant to be at the end of the meal. Siv kro matzah zmerim yechlu. So together with the pesach, you eat the matzah in the morning. And pesach, nechal al soiva. It's meant to be eaten al soiva, not when a person is overly hungry and anxious. It's meant to be eaten towards the end of the meal. It's not a mafirach pesach pesachimon, so pesach is meant to be the last in the meal. Okay, so we have the non chametz, but it's non matzah. It doesn't have the shimur l'shem matzah. Says the Gemara, b'achroin in b'rishoyin aloy. So he can be yoytze his mitzvah of achilas matzah by eating proper matzah, matzah which is properly watched. If he does that at the end of his meal, it can be yaitzu with that. Bachroinin, with his last portion. Bereshoin aloi, but he can't be yaitzu with the initial matzah that he ate. The betsega shel nochem, which he ate up until that point. Why not? My time. Mishum to avad bo shimur, because he didn't do shimur. He got it from the guy when it was ready in its dough form. So what? Why can't he do shimur from this point onward? When he begins to prepare it for baking, etc. El olav shmamina. This is a raya shimur mikarabina. That just doing shimur from this point onward is not sufficient. You need to do shmira all the way back from the time when it was still grain. And this is Rav's raya. Why are you doing shmira if there's no water being introduced? Apparently, you're going to soak it. You meant to soak your grain, and that's why you need shmira. Says the Gemara. You have a raya that shimur mikor be'inam. How do you know? Mimai, oh mimai, dil moshani hasam. Perhaps you don't need to do shmira from the point of of grain onward. Perhaps shmira from the point where you introduce the actual water to the flour that's sufficient. And here you didn't even have that. That's why it's not matzah shmira. Mimai, dil moshani hasam. There it's different to be'inam the nachas of shimur because from the time that it needed shimur. When he introduced that water to the flour, he didn't do shimmer, he wasn't around. He purchased the dough from the guy. So that's why it's not suitable for matzah's mitzvah. But in a case where, at the moment where it required shimmer, i.e., when he introduced that water to the flour, he would have done shimmer. Perhaps shimmer at the time of Elisha is enough. How do you know? That you need to have shimur from the point of uh, of grain of dry grain, from the initiation of the process, which indicates that it has to be soaked. That's why you have to wash it from the chum. How do you know? Says the Gemara. Even so, Rava wasn't phased. Rava, Rava didn't retract, and he held 
He held his ground. He held that you do shimur from the time of harvesting and you meant to soak it. And the shimur is meant to initiate from that point onward. The Amalu Lahanu, the Mahabhi Kipi. Rav instructed those who would tie the bundles of grain. When you do that, Ha'pichol Lushem Mitzvah, you should do Lushem Mitzvah. Al Makasav apparently holds, Shimur Meikara Mitchilosai Vatsayfa Bina. You need to have Shimur all the way back from the initiation of the process, from when you begin handling this grain, from the point of Ktsira, all the way to the end. Concludes the Gemara. In fact, Mar, Braid Ravina, Mar the son of Ravina, Man Barbi, his mother, when she collected the grain for the for Pesach, she would gather the grain into the Arbi, into these bowls, safeguard them, secure them. She began her shimur from the point of harvesting Mishas Ktsira in line with Rav Shita, that shimur begins all the way back at the time of harvesting. So in summary, we learned about soaking grain, Lasisa, Bryce says Sa'irn can't be soaked. When it comes to Chitin, Rabbi said, well, it's a Chumrah, but never Shachma. And Rabbi concluded it's actually a mitzvah to soak. Now what happens if you've noticed some signs of Chimutz? The grain became bloated and split. This Baku. All agree it's Asr. If it's learning this Baku Mamash, but it's on its way to becoming split, then we have Machlekes. Now what happens after you see the kernel has split? Rabbi Yesi says, you still have an Eitzah. Just soak it in vinegar, which will stop the chimutz process. And Shmuel says, Ein halach karbyesi, you can't do that. Continues the Gemara, Hau arba dechiti. There was this boat full of wheat, the tava, which sunk bechishta, in this river called chishta. So it now absorbed water. It became chametz, but this chametz is not really visible. It's not really noticeable. You don't really see that it's chametz. Shar ya rava lezvuni lenachem. Rava loud this grain to be sold to Goyim. Eisvei Rabba Bar Levoi He asked the Makash. We learned in a Brisa, Begit of Be Kalayim. Not a thread of Kalayim or Shatnes, a loss in a Begit. So we know there's Kalayim, this garment, but we don't, we can't really see it. It's not discernible. Harez Eloyim Kirenu Lenachrim. He shouldn't sell it to a guy, Because the guy might turn around and sell it to a Yid. Who might unwittingly wear it. Nor should he use it as a cloth saddle for his donkey because as Rashi says he might actually transfer some of it to his begot. Which indicates that if it would be used merely as a mardas, it would be okay because you can sit on the kalayim, it's not, it's not soft, it's not, going to, it's not going to pose any concern if it's on the chamar. But he might go ahead and use it as a uh, patch for his begot. So don't use it for this purpose. But he can use it for the mace. As Tachrichan has shrouds for the mace. Because as Rashi explains, nobody's going to take from the mace. It's also Bahano. And the mace himself is free from all these obligations. He can wear Kalayim. So that's the price. Lenachri, my time alloy. But why can't he sell it to a Nachri? Lav Mishum isn't the reason because the Hadamad and Israel. Because the guy might turn around and Maz and Israel and sell it to a Israel. Who might not realize that it's Kalayim. Here as well. The wheat which sunk in the river is not clearly discernible. It's not clear that it's chametz. So how can you sell it to a guy who might turn around and sell it to Yisrael? Who might consume it on Pesach? Hadam so the rubber backtracked and he said, you're right, Lizvinu kaba kaba Yisrael, to be sold a portion at a time, meaning a kaf to this yid, a kaf to the other Yisrael, keheche de kali kame pischa, so we can ensure that it's going to be completed and consumed before Pesach. Turn up on the person wants to add some flour to his kadeir, uh, to his pot, to the dish there, and he can't do that on Pesach. I'm concerned about chametz. If he wants to add some flour, this is what he meant to do. First place the flour. Then add some vinegar. So the vinegar will boost the, uh, the heat within this uh, cooking dish. And in tandem, the heat with the acidity of the Vinegar will prevent the chimutz process from developing. Some say, You can even do it in the reverse. First place some vinegar into this dish. 
even though it's going to get slightly diluted, it's okay. First place the vinegar and then add the flour. So once again, the vinegar will prevent the chimut's process from taking place. Let's take a look at Rashi, right off to the left. Moilulan says Rashi bekemach, when you add some flour to thicken your uh, dish, that's called malila. So according to the first shita, first place the flour and then the vinegar. Explains Rashi, the doesn't allow it to become chametz. Because it cooks. So the combination, the heat and the acidity will prevent the chimitz. Could even do it in the reverse. First the chimitz into the dish and then add the flour. Even though it's already mixed, the, the um, vinegar is already diluted. It will go ahead and create this uh, cooking effect on anything that's added afterwards. Says the Gemara. Omer of Chiz, uh, sorry, Man Yishayman. Who is the Shita that even when the Chametz is already sitting in a Tavshal, this cooked food, and already slightly diluted, it still has that acidic effect and cooking effect? Omer of Chiz, Rabbi Yehudi. It's Rabbi Yehuda, it's not. Ilfes Vakadera, types of pots. Shevira Mur Sochan. Which he removed, boiling off the flame. Lo Yitain Le Soichan Tav. Zashabas, of course. He can add seasoning. It's a clear reshine, it's coming off the flame. It is mavash. But it could add seasoning into a cliche. So when he pours from that initial pot into a ka'ara, a bowl, or a tamchoy, a large plate, now it's already a cliche. A cliche doesn't have the ability to mavash, it can add some seasoning. Yeah, you're right, you can add seasoning to any. Klisheni, which has boiling food, chutz, except midover sheyish b'yichemitz v'tzir. This dish has some vinegar or fish brine. Due to the acidity, it boosts the heat effect, and you can't even eat seasoning, even if it's a klisheni, because it's going to be mavash. So we see that chemitz, even if it's already inside this dish, still retains its acidic properties, and will be mavash. V'nukim karabiyasi. Why can't we attribute this shita that the chaymets is so powerful. Why can't we attribute to Rabbi Yaisi? This is not Rabbi Yaisi, I mean, Shoyim B'chaymets. This is Rabbi Yaisi that we learned earlier. If we see the grain has begun to exhibit signs of uh, chaymets process, we see it's split. Rabbi says, look, easy solution, just put it into chaymets, to vinegar which will stop the process. The chaymets, Tzimson, and the vinegar will harden it. So perhaps this Yesh Oymrim, which attributes great power to Chaimetz is Rabbi Yaisi. Ki Ashmin Rabbi Yaisi. When do we see that Rabbi Yaisi maintains that Chaimetz is powerful? When it's intact. He says, immerse the, the uh, splitting grain into the, to the Chaimetz. We're speaking about pure Chaimetz. Aval the Tarev but when it's already mixed in with something else, we don't see necessarily Rabbi Yaisi would hold that it maintains its property. And therefore, we didn't connect the Shita to Rabbi Yaisi. Rather, we found another Mandam, which is Rabbi Yudim Sechel Shabbos. Whether putting the, adding the flour and then the vinegar, or the vinegar and then the flour, either way it's us. Why? We're concerned that you might confuse things. We tell the Nazar, who's not meant to drink wine, eat grapes, get away! Around, around the vineyard, don't even get close. Keep far away, don't take chances. If it says, Ula, don't take chances here as well. Now I'm going to add flour to the cooking dish, even if you're going to add the vinegar, whether before the flour or after, because if we allow the chaymets to be added afterwards, which seems to be okay, but it might lead him to do it beforehand, which is problematic. Rapapi shori lei lubordiki the Beresh Galusa. Rapapi allowed the cook in the home of the Resh Galusa. Lemimcha kedera bechasis. So he allowed the, um, the fellows, the uh, cooks in the Reish Galusa's home, to thicken their kedera, their pot, the, uh, whatever's cooking there, bechasisi, using flour of roasted grains. Since it's already roasted, there's no concern of the flour becoming chametz, so you can put it even to a liquid dish. Oh, how can you do that? Ika de shari Is there anybody that will allow such a thing? Beduchta de shichi avdi, in a place where Servants, avodim, 
I found, as Rashi says, the Avodim are mezalzal. They, uh, they are lax in their observance of mitzvahs and halachas. If you allow them to use the roasted flour, perhaps next time they'll use ordinary flour which can come with echimus. Ika de Amri, there's another version. Rav Gufa, Rav himself, machilo kidr b'chassisi. His own kidr, his own pot, he would thicken using this, 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 this roasted flour, but would not allow, of course would not allow the avodim, who are lax and zazel in uh, Israel. Continues the Mishnah. And we know that when it comes to ordinary water, so you mix it with flour, it's going to make it uh, chametz. Wait a sheer meal, which is 18 minutes. It's presumed to be chametz. When it comes to other types of liquids, may peris, we discussed earlier, according to Rabbi, there's no concern, according to Abaya, there's a concern. Now, all seem to agree that if you mix some water into the may peris, it's going to expedite the process. So, rather than just taking 18 min- minutes, it's going to, it's going to expedite the chametz process. It's going to become chametz quicker. The combined effect of the the juice, the fruit juice with the water, it boosts the, the, the chimus process and intensifies the, the, the heat, etc. And it will come chametz very quickly. So Mr. Zahari is going to discuss a case where you have a dish, you have a dip, or whatever that has some water in it. And it also has made pears, but not your standard fruit juice, a more acidic form of fruit juice, like vinegar. Or has these, uh, crushed, this crushed mustard, which is also acidic and sharp. The question here is, do we treat this like ordinary, an ordinary mixture of made pears with water, which actually expedite the process, create an even greater concern than just water itself? Or shall we say, perhaps since we're dealing with something which is sharp and acidic, for instance, vinegar, it doesn't enhance the, the, the ability, it doesn't it doesn't grant power to the water and expedite the system. Rather, it remains neutral, perhaps. It's as though there wouldn't be any main pairs here. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't help, but it doesn't harm anything. So this is going to be a between Chanan Kama and Reb Meir. One cannot add flour to the Chareses, crushed fruit, which has some vinegar in it, or into mustard. If he added this flour, eat it right away. So before it becomes chametz. So according to this shita, Tanakama, the Chachamim, it's not presumed to be chametz immediately because this is different. Although there's some water there, plus some other juice, like vinegar, this vinegar won't necessarily expedite the chametz process because it's sharp. And something which is sharp it's actually more difficult for it to become chametz, as we saw earlier. The chametz actually can prevent the chametz from taking place. For Rabbi Meir, he says, no, you can't eat it. You have to go and burn this charez, this chardal, which has flour. According to him, despite the fact that the fruit juice in there, the vinegar, the may paris, or the uh, chardal juice is something which has acid and sharp, nevertheless, it's no different than other may pairs, and we know that when it was a combination of may pairs with Maya, we're concerned that the chimus took place very quickly. Continues the mission with another halach. Eim avashna sa pesach. Omen not cook the carbon pesach. Carbon pesach is meant to be roasted, barbecued. You can't use like a mashkin, whether liquids, like may pairs, or fruit juices. Aval sachin umat bilin oiseben. But you can go ahead and smear it during the roasting process. You can dip the um, Karm Pesach while you're eating it, that's okay. You can smear using fruit juice during the roasting process and when you're done roasting, you can dip it as long as you don't actually cook it using these liquids. The water which the baker uses to rinse his hands when he handles the dough, it should be spilled out immediately because it can become chametz because they're filled with dough residue. So we had a discussion now, Mishnah, regarding flour, which was added to charoises, which has some vinegar in it. So you have some water in there, plus this vinegar, which is considered 
a non-water liquid, it made Paris. Or you had some flour added to the chardel. Once again, it had some water in there, but the chardel, due to the fact that it's sharp and acidic, the question is, do we regard like ordinary made Paris? Which poses a great concern. We're concerned that the made Paris will actually expedite the chimut's process. According to Ramei, the answer is yes. According to Chachamim, no. Due to the fact that it's acidic and sharp, it won't expedite the process. Amar of Kahana, machlekes, it's a chardel. This machlekes, meaning, the Chum allowed this thing to be eaten. That's only when he added the flour into the chardel. We have two cases in the mission. He added to the chardel, the, the mustard, which is very sharp, or into the charesis, which is acidic due to the vinegar content, but it's not as sharp as mustard. Since Rav Kahana, you meant to know that the Chum only allowed when it comes to mustard due to its sharpness, the fact that it's very, very sharp. When it comes to adding flour into the charesis, which is not so acidic and sharp, all agree it has to be burnt immediately. Once again, because we had that lethal combination. We have made pears with water, which is presumed to become comments immediately. We have a right from a price. The Chum agree when it comes to the charesis that it can't be eaten. You can't add flour into charesis. Vimnasa, you serve me out. And to mustard, which is more, which is sharper. Rabbi Emery served me out. He's concerned. He says the combined water with my Paris creates that chametz combination. As long as you eat it right away, you're okay. Omar of Huna, Breda of Yehuda, Omar of Nachman, Omar Shmo, Halacha, Kadir Chachamim, that this mixture can be eaten. Omar Leir of Nachman, Yitzchak, Leir of Huna, Breda of Yehuda. See, Esra of Huna. You say, Allah HaKadir HaChachamim, you quoted Shmo, that we pass like the Chachamim. Which one of these two cases were you referring to? Acharoises Kamemar? Even Acharoises? Even there? Do the Chachamim say you can eat it? Ayachardal Kamemar? Or perhaps only on Chardal, due to the fact that it's very sharp. Omer Leis, so Rav Hunabri, the Yehuda responded, Ma'af Kamina, why would you ask? Why would there be any difference between one and the other? He said, well, the Rav Kahana. As Rav Kahana. Said, Dom Rav Kahana, there is a distinction. Machlekes is like a chardel. The machlekes, meaning the chacham allowed only when it comes to chardel. He placed the kemach in the chardel due to its increased sharpness. Avol is like a charesis, the verakol yasarf miyad. When it comes to adding flour to charesis, despite the fact that it has the acid, it's not as sharp as chardel. And according to all shittas, according to chacham, we're concerned the fact that there's some water in there with me, Paris. Perhaps, it turns into chametz immediately, and therefore has to be burnt. So if Kahama made that differentiation between chares and chardel, what do you say about that? Shmuel passed like the chachamim. Did he mean to say that even allow chares? Only chardel. Oh, Marley, Sir Afunar, of you that responded, Loi Shmuel, I never heard that. Chiluk, Loi Marley, really, meaning, I don't agree with it. Whether to chares or chardel, chachamim in both cases, allow this mixture to be Omar Abashi, it's actually, it actually seems that Rav Kahana's approach is more reasonable and rational. It makes more sense. Why? I have a right. Because here, who is he quoting? Rav Huna Breda Vida is quoting Rav Nachman in the name of who? Shmuel. Right? Now Shmuel himself doesn't seem to accord great power to vinegar. With Amr Shmuel, Shmuel earlier said, when it came to the kernels which um, exhibited signs of the chimut's process, it, it, it was split. Rav Yisi says, no problem, dunk them into vinegar. And Shmuel said, no, but Omer, with the Omer Shmuel, the fact that Shmuel said, vinegar doesn't have that power. You can't go and submerge the kernels into vinegar. My love, should we not assume, should we not deduce from that, chamutsi, tzimusi, with the late summits, it can't, Harden, it can't stunt the growth, the, the process. So Chaimis doesn't have that ability. Apparently, it's treated like ordinary May Paris. And when joined together with water, such as in the case of the Cha of the Charoises, that lethal combination will create Chametz. So that's Shmuel Shita. Apparently, when Shmuel said, Halacha, that this mixture can be eaten. It was only for the chardel, which is very sharp, but not to the charoises, which merely has that uh, 
acidic ingredient, the, the vinegar, which isn't really that effective. Says Gemar, no, loy, Duma, perhaps, loy mitzma summis. You're right. The vin, vin, vinegar, according to Shmuel, doesn't have that tremendous power that it can go ahead and harden things and shrink it and stunt the chimutz. To that extent, it can't, it can't be effective. But, but it's still not going to create chametz when presented together with water. Ordinary made Paris mixed with water boosts the power of the chimutz and there's a concern of immediate chametz. But when it comes to vinegar, that's not ordinary fruit juice. It has some acidic nature to it. And due to its acidic property, perhaps it won't adversely affect the water. Perhaps it has a neutral effect. Nor this way, nor that. It won't expedite the chemist process. And perhaps it won't slow it down. But let's treat this mixture like ordinary, like an ordinary water mixture, in which case you have some time to eat it. You have at least 18 minutes. Therefore, go ahead and eat it. So perhaps, yeah, Shmuel, who says, Halacha Gedir HaChamim, was in reference to both cases. Flour added to mustard due to its sharpness, which will prevent the water from becoming chametz, And also to Haraisis, due to the fact that it has some vinegar in it. And due to the acidic property of that vinegar, it won't. It won't expedite the chimus process of the water. It can be, it's like, it'll be discounted. It won't play a role, nor in this direction, nor in the other. And therefore, you can go eat that mixture without a concern. Okay, so we learned regarding using vinegar. We have pretty much three different contexts in our daf regarding the use of vinegar taking kernels which have exhibited signs of chimuts, that have already uh, begun to split. According to Rav Yaisi, chimuts is so powerful, you can take the um, grains which are on the way to becoming chimuts, be shayre in chimuts, and vinegar, which will stop the process and prevent the chimuts from taking effect. According to Shmuel, vinegar doesn't have that power, and you can't use the solution. Regarding adding flour to a tafshel, so you have a cooking dish and you want to add some flour which has some chaymets. That's okay. As long as you put the kemach and then the chaymets because the vinegar, due to its acidic property together with the heat of the dish which is cooking, it's going to boost that heat and due to the immense heat and acidity it's going to prevent the chaymets from taking place. According to the dish, you can even do it in the reverse. By placing chaymets first into the dish, and then after was the kemach. We concluded with adding kemach to chardel, adding kemach to charoises. So when it comes to the chardel, according to the chum, you can eat it, because due to its increased sharpness, it's not going to generate an immediate chimus, despite the fact that there's water there, because ordinary pears maybe can go ahead and boost the water, the chimus property of the water, but when it comes to chardel, which is sharp, it's going to actually be a uh, non-factor here, and therefore go ahead and eat that chardel. According to the mayor, burn it right away. He holds that whatever you're mixing in with this water, be it from the chardel, be it from the vinegar, it is now treated like made Paris with water, and it's presumed to be chametz right away. When it comes to the kemach and the chardel, we have a discussion. So the chametz say, eat it right away. Her mayor says you have to burn it. That's Rav Huna braid Rav Yehuda's approach. That even in the case of the charoises, Despite the fact that it's not so sharp, but the fact that it has vinegar, that's sufficient to allow this thing to be eaten. It's not considered like may Paris mixed with water. And therefore, the Chum, you can eat it. According to Rav Khan, however, unlike the Charda, which is very sharp, Charoises doesn't have that quality. And therefore, when you mix the Kemach into this Charoises that has water plus may Paris, what does may Paris say? The vinegar. We're concerned about immediate Chumets. And therefore, go ahead. And even quote to burn this mixture right away. Okay, time for a brief chazar of today's daf. We began with Yesu, who says, when you're going to do chalita, scold the grains, make sure that they don't sit next to each other because one might perch itself into the crack of the other and the boil might not reach that point, in which case it's going to be moist without the boiling water protecting the chimus process. And therefore, there's a concern about chimitz. We learned about my parents, according to Rava, my parents in Machmitzen, according to Bayer Machmitz, all agree 
that Moshe, which is on the move in transit, is not going to be absorbed and therefore pose no concern about chametz. What about soaking the kernels prior to grinding? Bryce says, soyrin cannot be soaked. When it comes to chitin, which are tougher than soyrin, we have a discussion. According to Rabbah, a person could be machmer, bal nefesh yachmer, not to soak it. According to Rabbah, it's actually a mitzvah. That means a riot from the fact that you need to have matzah shmura. The shmura has to begin from the harvesting, indicating that there's going to be water introduced to the scene already at that moment. Apparently, it's a mitzvah to soak your chitim in order to have highly refined, high quality matzah. Now, what about if the grain was soaked and they've begun to exhibit signs? They, uh, they got bloated to the point that they've split and they're awesome. If it hasn't yet split, but it can split, it can't resist the sharp scent coming out of a barrel of wine. According to Mar Ukfa, that's a concern. According to Shmuel, it's not. What if they're already split? According to Abiyasi, you can submerge it in chaymets due to the high acidic content property of that vinegar. It's going to stunt the chaymets process. According to Shmuel, Ein Loch Garbiyasi, chaymets doesn't have that quality doesn't have the ability to stop the chimut's process in place. We learned that there's something called not chametz. <laughs> it could be eaten on Pesach, but it's not considered matzah shmura and cannot be used for matzah's mitzvah. So in addition to not being chametz, you need to have something called shmira, a positive element, which is a positive contribution to the matzah process and that enables it to be used for matzah's mitzvah. We learned that according to Rava, the Shmir takes place all the way back, Mishas Ketzirah, from time of harvesting. We had a story where there was a boat full of chametz, full of chita, which sunk, and there was chametz there, but it was not discernible. You couldn't tell that it was chametz. Rava says, don't sell it to a guy, rather, sell a bit at a time, a little to this Israel, a little to that Israel, so that it be consumed before Pesach. And we concluded the concept of chametz, vinegar. So we have three different guidelines here. Pure chaymets, Rabbi Yisrael says, they're so powerful. You can even immerse those um, kernels which have split, immerse it in chaymets, which will stop the chaymets process. Shmuel says you can't do that. What about adding flour to a tafshal where there is chaymets? In which case, the vinegar, due to its acidic property, will join forces with the heat of that tafshal to prevent chaymets from taking place. So that could be done. According to Tanakama, first put the kamach and then the chaymets, according to Yishayimim. Even the chaymets, which was placed earlier and a bit diluted with the tafshal, still retains its acidic properties and qualities and powers and allowed it to add that flour. We concluded with kamach being added to chardal, according to chametz, okay, you can eat it, according to may have to burn it. What about kamach and chalaisis? According to one shita, we have the same achlekes, according to Rav Kahana. Chalaisis doesn't have the same power and sharpness as chardal and therefore in this case. All agree that it's also because there's some water in there. And may pierce as well. May pierce with water. Create that lethal combination. And we're concerned about immediate chibots.